let's start off with a 360 uh, degree shot of one of these pianos. Uh, you can see how it looks at the front and in the brochures and on websites of course, but I want to give you a really nice close-up look and all those details that they won't quite give you in the brochures. Check out the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on Yamaha digital pianos and keyboards. Also check out our huge selection of pre-owned stock and come and visit us in our showroom here in Banbury just off Junction 11. To start with the design of it, um, it certainly has a nod to the traditional as you can see. Digital pianos don't have uh, iron frames in them and strings so there's no need for this section to be very high. Uh, on the back you can see uh, the, the black panels and look it's completely flat as well. Do you see that? Totally flat so it's designed to go right up against a wall and the cables incidentally you can see coming out here uh, are just the power cable there. Figure of a power cable that slots in the bottom the only other cable that you need to put in is this one just here and this is the uh, connects the top with the keys on it down to the pedal unit down below and quite usefully Yamaha within the packaging give you these things um, these are adhesive hooks and it allows you to stop that cable from flapping about uh, really useful too and boy are they sticky so they're not going to go anywhere um, they're pretty decent, like everything Yamaha does, solid as anything, and designed to last. So let's have a look around the front again. Okay, first thing to mention on here is going to be the lid, or the full, as sometimes they are called on upright pianos. Uh, let's pull this out. There you go, look, see it covers the keys on there, uh, keeping the dust off, um, but more importantly, not just keeping the dust off the keys, but keeping the dust from going in between the keys, which has the potential to mess with any electronics in there. So uh, the actual design of this is solid as well. I can feel the rails that it's on are built to last and it slots in there at the top and it's not gonna slide out at all while you're playing. So don't worry about that. And as it goes down, it's really, really solid too. And um, so that is the the lid or the full. Um, to the left you've probably spotted already the control panel on here. Um, watch our other videos for demonstrations and explanations of all of this stuff but again the way the buttons work it's, it feels solid. Everything Yamaha does is solid and these are just simple switch buttons here. Uh, you've got your multi-directional controls there and the um, LED screen there. Get a bit close so you can see it's all that you need. Good quality again. Over on the right hand side of the piano we've got the volume control and the model number here, CLP645, and the on and off switch. It's quite a thoughtful little design, but the on and off switch is you can't just turn it off by pressing it once, because um, apparently some people would be doing a performance and accidentally turn it off. So you have to hold it down for a second to actually turn the whole instrument off. So quite a nice little thoughtful thing. Lots of things on this piano are like that because Yamaha of course gets so much feedback from their customers they're very keen to learn and to keep improving their models so you'll spot little things like that that um, have had a lot of thought going into them too. While we're up here at the top the music rest as you can see it's quite sizable you can get a decent double A4 book on there in fact you probably go as far as four A4 sheets wide and you've got thingamabobs hooks whatever you want to call them, clips, to keep the pages from folding in on each other. Again, quite a thoughtful design. Have a nice close look at those. And again, there's a neat little place for them to sit, just there. So that's the music rest. Now, how does it go down? Uh, let's go around to the back to have a look. Really, really simple. For those of you that don't want to use the music rest, you can just flick these bits up here. Down it'll go and it'll sit completely flat and I've seen models like this in people's houses that don't read music just play by ear and they put flower pots or picture frames or whatever on top of there and it keeps it looking even flatter and neater but if you do need to use them it's really simple to put up here have a really close look that's how it works back of there and you just pull it backwards and it sits like that so quite a useful music rest. 
Next thing I want to show you is the logo, of course, the classic Yamaha logo, bang in the front of the piano. Looks really, really nice, just the same as you'll find on their upright pianos <coughs> and their grand pianos as well. Um, let's go to the underneath of this piano. And now starting off on the left-hand side here, we've got ooh, the light that tells you whether the piano's on and off or not. And just underneath there, we have this, just to give you a bit of reference as to where this is again. Here we go. So we've got our headphone hanger. Again, really thoughtful. A lot of people play using headphones now because of proximity of their neighbors, etc. They've got to keep the noise down. And Yamaha thought, well, it's a good idea to have somewhere to hang your headphones, isn't it, when you're not using them. So you can just stick them on here. And it just screws in at the top there, two screws. And then we've got our input and output interface here, or one of them, because there's another one I'll show you in a sec. As you can see, you've got USB, uh, both types, auxiliary input as well, which is a small jack. And uh, you've got headphones sockets there as well. Now, just coming back to the auxiliary input, by the way, this model, the 645, does have a Bluetooth um, capability as well. So you can play music from your, your tablet or your device or whatever via Bluetooth through the speakers. But there is a cable auxiliary input if you want to use that. Uh, headphone sockets, notice there are two. Now, this is because some people want to play um, uh, a duet while they're got two sets of headphones in. So you can sit and play this, two people can sit and play this piano while they both wear headphones. Now there's another input interface, as I mentioned, just a little bit further underneath. And here it is. Now what we've got with this one, as you can see, uh, I'm the wrong way up here, aren't I? But I can tell you that you've got uh, MIDI in and out, of course, traditional five pin MIDI sockets. You've also got auxiliary out so you can go out to extra speakers if you want to or into a recording interface plus there's the left and right channel should you want to go via mono that by the way is the cable that you saw on the back of the piano that connects the um, top of the piano this top section with the pedals which i haven't mentioned yet right down here we've got the pedals and uh, three pedals as you know we've got uh, accelerator brake and clutch not really, you've got the sustain pedal there, the um, sostenuto and the dampener pedal, I think it is. But, again, a useful little thing underneath here is that, that little um, um, bolt under there that you can turn around and adjust depending on the depth of your shag. If you've got a particularly deep shag, then you can adjust it so the whole unit itself I've adjusted it so it's well into the carpet now, um, won't sort of fall down slightly. If someone's got a really, really deep um, carpet, sometimes this can all go down together and it's, it's not ideal. So you just move that thing down a little bit so that the piano and the pedal unit will stay absolutely rigid, solid. Makes it much easier to use. Now, while we're down here underneath the piano, We've got the uh, speakers, downward facing bass speakers on either side there. Um, should you ever want to know where the serial number is, you'll find it on this silver sticker just here. But um, putting the piano together, by the way, um, it's worth noting underneath here, you've got screws here. Uh, we're missing one there, but there's one at the back. And it's the same on this side as well. You've got one at the back there. Uh, this one here and this one here. Now, those are the only six screws that connect the whole top section to the bottom. Useful thing to know when buying these, 99% of people choose to receive these pianos uh, flat packed in boxes, believe it or not. And this entire top section here is already built when it arrives in the box. It's just a case of getting the legs, as to say, these bits here, um, the bottom section goes along there, the other leg and the back panel, screwing them all together and then lifting this top section, which is all built already, and putting it down on top of it. So building these pianos is really, really easy. So just to conclude, it's quite a narrow, quite snazzy little design, but traditional all the same. Of course, you can get it in different colours. Please have a look at our other videos as well. 
where we do lots of demonstrations and comparisons, but this was just for you to get a really nice close look at it. And let's just have a look at down at the tapered front. You can see how it all fits together there. And the grain, interesting looking at the grain, by the way. This is, of course, a veneer just here. And you'll notice that these finishes, you can see where it joins here. The veneer finishes are about 400 pounds cheaper. Now, they're still great and they still look really nice, but the reason they charge about 400 pounds more for the polished ebony finishes, I can show you, I've got one behind me. This is a polished ebony finish and you notice you don't see the joins on here. It's all 52 layers of polished ebony lacquer. So really, really neat and uh, premium, as they say, the finish on these, rather than the veneers that you get on the models that don't say polished ebony. And that explains why they're um, more expensive. Hope that's been helpful to you. Check out the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on digital pianos and keyboards, and check out our huge selection of pre-owned stock as well.